a few more things to insert on our form. So, we've already got a good number of things that you're going to see commonly on forms. Now we're going to add another common item. Let's go to Insert Form File Field. What this is, is sometimes you'll be on a website, let's say it's a job search website or something, and you're applying for a job. You might upload your resume. So you hit this button, it says Browse, you find the file that you want to upload, and you upload it. Or any number of websites where you're just uploading a file. And that's what this button's for on the form. So let's call this Upload. And I'm going to say, Upload your poem, like so. And I want this label to be before the Browse button. So I'm going to hit OK. And there it is. So we would hit this. Well, let, let me actually just show you. So Control S. We'll save, and then we'll open a web browser. Sorry, I'm going to allow blocked content. So Now, there it is, what we added. Upload your poem. Now, if you hit Browse, it will take you to your computer, and you'll be able to pick the file, and then it puts the path in here so that when you hit the, the button normally at the bottom to upload, submit, continue, it would upload from that path. It would know exactly where to find the file. So used a lot of the time on forms. Speaking of which, let's add our Submit button at the end, or Continue button, whatever we want to call it. Let's exit out of here. Let's go back. At the very bottom here, let's add our Submit button. So Insert, and do you remember which button this was? We went over it earlier. It's the one called Button. So it's pretty simple. Let's title this idea at Submit. And we could label it um, Continue. And I want the label to be before the button. And there it is. So we could put To Continue, click Submit, whatever we want. Or we could just completely eliminate all that and, and leave it just as a Submit button, like so. So it would submit all the data entered to the specified location. Now, a couple more very useful tools I, I want to show you with forms. That's the validation um, elements. And these are, I mentioned them earlier briefly, under Insert Form, Spry Validation. So it basically, it's basically using Java to catch whether someone puts in inaccurate data. And you're not going to be able to catch everything, but a lot of people don't want to fill out forms. They just want to continue to maybe to the point in the site that they want to get to. So they might enter ambiguous data or incomplete data. And you're not going to be able to catch it all, but you will be able to limit it using validation tools such as this one. So let me show you how it works. Let's enter Spry Validation Text Field. I'm going to put that um, in the next box right below Upload Your Poem. And I'm going to call it um, Email. And we'll just put Email Address. And we'll hit Attach. We'll leave that there. And Before Item is Fine. Hit OK. Oh, I added it down there accidentally. So let me undo. And I want to add it here. So let's insert form, spry validation text field, email, email address. There we go. So now we see a little text up here called spry text field, spry text field 2. Email address, which it's the same if you click on it as was before when you clicked over here where you're just modifying the actual characters and the style of them. And here, if you click on the box, same thing. You're given the same options as you were before. Is it a single line, multi-line, password, max characters, 
change your ID, whatever you want. But now we have something additional, and that's if you click up here on Spry Text Field. Now we have the properties for this, and this is the rules to catch whatever data they're trying to enter and make sure it's correct. So first, you tell it what kind of data are we expecting in that spot. We're given a lot of cool common options. You, are we expecting a URL in there, an IP address, um, currency, social security number, phone number, zip code, credit card, time, date, email address, blah, blah, blah. We are going to pick email address because that's what we decided this field was going to be. Now, we'll deal with what this is in a moment. But we're going to enter one more spry text field before we start making modifications. So insert form, spry validation text field, and we'll name this one zip. And we'll call it zip code. And we'll leave everything else defaulted. And there's zip code. Now, let's control S and open up a web browser. Preview it. And of course, like I said, it's using Java to validate, so we have to allow blocked content. And those are our two fields. Now let's try to enter something in email address um, that's ambiguous, like so. Try to hit submit. Ah. Invalid format, and then it tells you here a value is required for zip code. So let's try putting a correct format in here, like um, but see this is this is why you can still get around it. It's expecting characters at characters.com or .net. But it really doesn't know, there's no way to verify it's an actual valid address, but just that the format is correct. So we hit submit, now it's green, it's fine, but it's still expecting something here. So if we go 94588, for instance, or something, we hit. See, now it accepted it. So, let's go back and make a couple changes to this. Now, in the email address field, if we click on the spry text, we have it to say invalid format. Um, upon submittal. So we can make the change to when do you want it to catch this? After you hit submit? Um, as you're typing or when you tab to a different section. Well, let's pick one for each. We'll make this upon change and we'll make this, let's click on spry text field for the zip code. We'll make this on blur. Now we'll notice the difference. So let's hit control S, F12 to preview. Allow blocked content. Yes. Now, let's start to put an email address. It already says invalid format. And then if we put, don't put nothing, it says a value is required. So let's try to put like hat at hat dot com. Ah, see now it says, oh, aha. The format is looking correct, so I'm not going to say invalid format. Because as soon as it saw that dot, it knew it was going to be .com, .net, or .whatever. So, now, so that was as we were typing. Now, here, 9677, let's say we start going really far. It's not catching it, right? But as soon as you tab, maybe I didn't put the wrong format in there. Let's go. See, it didn't catch it for zip code. So let's go back and find out why. So under zip code, let's click on spry text field. We are going to change it from initial to valid. And this is the reason it didn't catch it, because we didn't choose zip code. So now it automatically says, okay, if you're going to choose zip code, then we're going to preview it to see if it's a valid format or not. And now we've chose zip code, it says, okay, what kind of zip code are you talking about? Nine digit, five digit, UK, Canada, what? I'm going to leave it as US five digit. 
So now if we control S, go back F12 to preview. Allow the blocked content. Now we can enter our email address that's valid format, but still <laughs> um, an ambiguous email. Now we go into zip code, and let's say we did put something strange, like 7C448. So it's not catching it, right? But as soon as you tab, then it caught it. So what you're telling the spry is, OK, when do you want me to catch this, at tab or while I'm typing? So this was set up, we set it up to catch it upon tabbing. This one we set up to catch as we're typing. So if we go back, we'll notice what those are called. Here under um, the zip code one, blur, that means when you tab, it'll catch it. But for email address, we had change. So basically, that meant as we type. But if neither are selected, it won't catch, the, it won't try to validate it until submittal. So those are a few more very useful validation tools. And you may use those as opposed to just the regular um, insertion of form elements that we were using before, because there really aren't many catches or validations on those form section. Some you're not going to want or need, but keep in mind the spry validation tools. Very useful um, in validating and making sure that the data entered by the user is at least in the right format, um, so it's going to be more useful to you or the customer.